Hey everybody, it wasn't too long ago when I made this first winch bumper for the cart and I, I like it. It's a pretty good design, but it's got a few flaws that I'm going to try and work out. So first of all, I really do like the design. The, the original bumper, which I have right here, has this box design here at the bottom. It sort of goes up to the sides where it's got the little brush guards up over here. And I tried to somewhat mirror that as much as I could in this design. But one of the first flaws that I have with this is it's just too close to the bumper right here. Trying to reach in to grab anything in here. I mean, it is possible to reach around from the side or from, from underneath, reach back up in here to hit a, a clutch release. But overall, I just, I feel like it's too close. And what I'd really like to do is have a bumper that's just pushed out a little bit further, about right here, just closer in line with the, the front of the tires so that when viewed from the side, it just, it sticks out further. Just even a couple inches would be great. And one of the first issues that I had with it, just trying to put it together, this ground bolt right here on the winch is just super crazy close to the bar that I've got right here for support. If this was just pushed out a little bit further, I'd have a lot more room to access that bolt right there. One of the other issues I had is I wanted to try and bring a brush guard around to the side and with it being as low as it is and square tube rather than a round tube it's just very difficult to make it look pretty and nice as it's coming around without having some funky weird angles and some strange cuts that I just didn't want to try and math out and figure out how to do. So what I'm going to do here is somewhat model this rectangular cutout area right here, right up here around the winch, so that there's gonna be some upright supports over here, just kind of boxing in the, the winch right here, and then make a similar design to this on top of it. And here's my rough measurements of it'll be about that much taller. Hopefully it'll bring it in line with the top of the bumper here so that when I do go to put a brush guard around the side, it'll just be a straight pole that I can make some cuts in, take it around around the corner. The other thing I was thinking was with a non-lifted cart and smaller tires, this style of bumper probably would work just fine. So if you're in the Charleston area, maybe you have a use for something like this on a non-lifted cart, I'd be interested in seeing how well this would fit a non-lifted cart. Maybe I'll cut you a good deal on it. So I got really lucky when I was at Metal Supermarket and found some 0.18 thick sheet that is eight inches wide to go ahead and put up here as my winch plate. And the last one was six inches. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure this. I'm pretty sure that this is 11 inches that I need. And then go ahead and mark it out and cut it out on the, so excited about this, the new plasma cutter. I was only slightly off in my measurements. I was thinking a piece of paper would be about the right size, eight and a half by 11. And I had those halves on the wrong side. It's 11 and a half by eight which was my uh, preferred measurement. So we're going to make this 11 and a half inches wide right there. I am so happy I get to use this thing again. I absolutely love using this plasma cutter. Let me see what I can do to rearrange this better. Okay, in my search for thicker things to use as a guide, this piece of channel will have to work. Should work just fine. Give you a nice little hand hold right there. I absolutely love cutting with the plasma cutter over anything else that I have to cut with in this shop. Shameless plug for the, uh, the Best Arc plasma cutter. Uh, this is the Generation 3, I believe. Yep, Generation 3 of BTC 500 DP. Got 220 outlet finally, which is pretty nice. This machine cuts so well. I mean, I can't even imagine how long it would have taken me to cut that out with, a, with an angle grinder. And then we'll just slap that up right there. Yep, that's gonna be a good fit. I'll go ahead and get this marked for the, the holes right there. Get those drilled out and go on to the next step. Get the bottom cut and then figure out how I'm going to get that thing wrapped around to make it secure. You got those holes drilled. I am really glad that I saved my templates from the last one because that's gonna make this a whole lot easier now that I'm doing this yet again. So for the bottom one, it's got a few more holes. And this one was a bit smaller in the original one and it's gonna be a little smaller in this one, but I'm just not sure how much shorter I want this or does this need to then get pushed out the two inches also. Since I'm making this one just a little bit different in the geometry, I'm gonna go ahead and just cut this off at the 11 and a half, same as the top one, leave it a bit long and go ahead and drill out these holes. And then I'll see just how much of this needs cut off once I bolt it up and kind of try to do the sides to see what I'm looking at. That just seems like a good idea for me for now. So let's go ahead and do that. Well, that's definitely not pretty right there on there at the edge because ended up hitting that weld. That wasn't good. So we're gonna have a little bit extra of a lip to clean up on this. Let's go ahead and get that slag chopped off. Holes drilled, 
here. That wasn't too bad. I got it all bolted up, and I gotta say, I kinda like that angle that it's got going there with the uh, slight offset of the bolts with four on the bottom and the, just the two on the top. Kind of gives it a nice little angle. Oh, a little bit too long. But yeah, that little angle right there, that's that's not too bad. And that'll give me something then to mount the shackles to down below. So let me set the winch on here, see how that looks. There we go. That is definitely going to give a lot more room to be able to reach in and work around this thing. And it looks like and that's about 90 degrees, so it's almost in line. Then with the, uh, the front tires here, let's see how it's gonna look with the, the bar going across. So I actually kind of got the wrong one. So it looks like around the uh, winch, we're gonna go with the 1 8 inch. And yeah, that'll then push the front of the winch out just in front of the tires so that if I were ever to hit a brick wall, I would hit the bumper first rather than the tires. Wait, that doesn't sound good. You wanna hit the tires first. Yeah, whatever. One thing that I noticed with the other one that I made, it went all the way back and was rubbing up against my VIN plate here, but it also just made it a little bit more difficult to get it on and off. Not that I'm gonna be taking it on and off a whole lot with just a couple of straps holding these two plates apart from each other. It'll give it a little bit more flex so it's easier to get in and out. And then when the winch is on the front, if I were to ever use this thing for anything, as it pushes down, pulls forward, disperse that weight and pressure to this bottom plate and use all of the bolts available. So let's go ahead and get that going. There we go, that should hold it pretty well. Go ahead and unbolt that. And what's next? No, really, what is next? Now that I'm looking at this, I just realized that uh, I don't have any holes to mount the winch in. So I'm gonna need to find the center, go ahead and mark those holes, take it back over to the drill press, and hopefully I didn't mess this up too bad by going ahead and tacking that other piece on there. Well, that sucks. Do I want to put this down below? Yeah, this is gonna have to go down below. So I'll have to cut this off at the 11 and a half inches, go six inches vertically here, and this will be then on top of that other one right here. Go up six inches, and then we'll need to box it off. So another 11 and a half across there. Should be good. Now I have not seen anyone else try to cut tubing with a plasma cutter. And rather than YouTube it and see what happens, we're just gonna go for it. So we're gonna mark this going all the way around and see what happens when you plasma cut square tube. Double check my math on that. Pretty close to 11 and a half, might be a little over. That one's spot on. Yeah, we're off just a little bit. It's fine. Let's see what happens. All right, let's see what happens when you plasma cut tube. Right about there. Should be good. Ooh, it shoots little sparklies inside. That's pretty cool. Now the compressor's turned off. It is kind of interesting just how deeply that thing cuts. There's your first cut up here at the top as I went the other direction. And then here's where I started the other one and came back. So just that little bit right there in the center. Pretty cool. And away she goes. So that's gonna be fun to try and clean that up just a little bit, but that is way quicker and easier and quieter. Try this again and just go a whole lot quicker, see what happens. This thing is hot. Yeah, I think speed has something to do with that because that's a much cleaner, better cut and straighter. I'm gonna have to flappy wheel that one up a little bit. Yeah, it's not too bad though. That side's a little long. Just hit that one a little bit extra. Now that I got all these cut, these are gonna go on the sides. This is gonna go top and bottom, something like this. Oops, now oh, that's gonna shrink it down a little bit. I was thinking, May as well go ahead and cut these at 45s. That way I don't have to cap those ends. But then that's gonna make it, no, I cut these at six inches. I knew I was thinking something. Okay, so if I, if I cut these at 45s, that is gonna be the six inches and the 11 and a half across, which looks like it would fit real well. And let me just take a look at this real quick. Yeah, that should be fine. It leaves plenty of room for the fair lead to go on top of that. Once there's a, a plate on the front of that, shouldn't be too difficult. Yeah, let's go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, lop these off at 45s and then tack those in place. This tacked right here at the bottom front so that we can put the winch here. Have that, it's gonna look great. Be right back. I've got these all cut and cleaned up now and I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. It's not really much of a secret, but how I clean up all these things to get all the, uh, the mill scale cleared off of them. So I bring my metal pieces outside and I've got a Harbor Freight bucket sitting out here that has muriatic acid. Where's that? There we go. Uh, muriatic acid. This uh, I got from Lowe's right down the road and I mix it 
for every gallon, there should be at least a gallon, if not two or three gallons of water just to uh, tone it down. Uh, just from touching it right there, you can see where I got some little drips on the glove. I don't know what this will do to your skin, but I'm sure it'll eat through this leather eventually. Uh, that's some very nasty, nasty stuff. So from here, I just take these and drop them in. Do not splash this stuff on your skin. I'm gonna get some uh, non-latex gloves and I'll be right back. Okay, and it has just been a couple of minutes. I'm gonna get the hose. Make sure you have plenty of water available. As long as it's taken me to grab two gloves, that mill scale is just wiping right off of there. Let me grab this piece here, try and show you up close. So this is about how fast it is. And that mill scale is gone. Gets a little finicky with the paint. Sometimes the paint comes off, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, you can just take a grinder to that or a little bit of sandpaper. This piece is mill scale free. And that's what the hose is for now. We're just going to rinse this off. And the next piece, same as the first one. Just give it a quick rub and all that mill scale is gone. You also want to make sure that you dry these parts off really fast afterwards. So if you can set them in the sun, if you have something hot, just heat that water up real fast. I'm just gonna set these over in the sun. Okay, now that I've got my metal clean, uh, it just, it looks kind of rusty. So I'm gonna show you what I do. It's called, or what I call it anyway, dip, rinse, and torch. And it seems to work pretty well for cleaning off lightly rusted metal. First, we're going to dip it into our mixture. Give it just a few seconds to get the acid going on it and it'll rinse any surface rust right off as you can see and the next thing we're going to do is grab our hose and rinse it and of course as everybody knows with oxidation the most important thing is to get it dry as quickly as possible so we come over here and the third part of dip rinse and torch is of course the torch and as you can see with this other one that i did earlier uh, same same thing dip rinse torch and just set it out and it's good and dry no rust okay very little rust now that these pieces have sufficiently cooled i want to go ahead and heat them right back up and it looks like we're going to be tacking this one i have to do some nice little measurements on that to make sure that it's even put that one on the side tack this one going up you know what let's do this the easy way let's tack this up first and then attach it to here because then i'll have edges that i can line up that'll be easier Got me some of these fancy magnets. Probably about time. Just gotta figure out how to use them. That looks good right about there. And even though I should have learned in my last welding project not to uh, weld in short sleeve shirts, uh, here I am doing it again. So this should be interesting. Yeah, a little bit of a gap on that side, but we'll fill it in. It'll be fine. Now the moment of truth. How good are my 90 degree angles? Hey, that's not too bad. I kind of half expected it to be going all crooked this away. Not too bad. We can work with that. I can live with it. Doesn't look half bad for my work anyway. Now let's go ahead and weld this thing up right there flush. You know what? I'm gonna go ahead and finish weld all of these just so that it's done. And then that way when I put it on here, I don't end up making it more difficult on myself to finish weld that last little bit. Be right back. Here we go, all spit shined and polished up. Some of my not worst welding ever, I'll admit. Ooh, okay. So I'm gonna grind these down and then get this thing as straight and level as possible. Get that welded up. Be right back after that. Okay, I went ahead and just dry fit it up here. Everything looks straight. I haven't leveled it with a measure or measured it with a level. It's kind of hard to tell. Might pull it up just a little bit so I can put those tires right on the line to see if it's going to be in line with those tires. It's really hard to say, but that's pretty much exactly where I, I envisioned it to be. There's definitely going to be a lot more room to reach in here, and that's exactly what I want. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some 45s on here, take it up a little bit, see what it looks like. I'll probably use the measurements from the old winch bumper there. Just reuse those measurements. Go ahead and set that on top. Let me see if I can somehow finagle that thing on top of there without it falling. Well, that definitely looks like a Frankenstein of a contraption. I like how high that comes. It looks like I might need to take an inch off of one of these sides up here because I like that height. 
because then that'll also allow me to grab another piece or put a, a 45 in here and kind of bring a little bit of a brush guard coming across this way. So I do like that look right there. And that is definitely going to be a much more substantial winch bumper. I like it. I'm gonna go ahead and start looking and thinking and measuring and stuff. I've got a couple pieces cut out and I went back and forth. Uh, first of all, if anybody has a good uh, how to cut a 45 on tube steel with a plasma cutter, drop it in the comments. I'd like to know because I'm not doing so great. Trimmed this thing down a few times to make sure that it kind of got away from my little notches that I cut in there because I went back and forth for do I want to go on top or do I want to go on bottom, you know, top or bottom, which I decided to go with the bottom. So these are going to go on here like this and then I'll put a big piece across, a big bar across the top and probably do on it as it's coming around. Give it a weird uh, I don't know, 150 degree angle or something crazy like that. And I just cut a little V notch out of it with the plasma. I can do that and hopefully not screw it up too bad. Give it a little angle. It doesn't need to come all the way back to where this is because that's what I was looking at doing, but yeah, you know, just something to kind of angle it to the side. Not a whole lot, but a little bit. Got these other pieces on here. Just kind of tacked for now. And oh, I was gonna see how level those were. I think it's one and a half inch bar. So that's gonna be the general look of it. Okay, now that I've got these all finished welded up, just need to decide how far over this is gonna extend before angling back just a little bit. This is about two inches from the edge here. And I think that's a pretty good distance. If I extended it to three, that brings my angle, I think just a little bit too far. That takes it almost to the middle of the tire. So yeah, let me back that off to two inches because I want to be able to have another piece. I want to be able to have another piece just to put it at a an angle, maybe something like that. Yeah, that'd be good right about there. Maybe I will leave it at three inches. It's easier to take an inch off rather than trying to put an inch back. And then that'll give me another extension of about six inches going off to the side. Just something to brush something to the side if it were to come in contact with anything ever, which like I never take this thing off-road or do anything too crazy with it. This is all just cosmetic, just for fun. So we're gonna come over here, measure 34 and a half inches. And because I'm terrible at making measurements going around a round object. And if you haven't heard me say this before, I love this plasma cutter. It makes it so much easier to do stuff. Still trying to figure out how to line this thing up. Something that I have started doing is getting just too far away because it's easier to scoot a little bit further away to knock that last little bit of the edge off to get as close to that line as possible. And it doesn't take but maybe a second or so to get through a one and a quarter inch tube. That probably should have been supported better. But it's pretty easy just to get a nice little sharp edge right there. Well, that's not razor sharp. A nice straight clean edge. Don't have to worry about grinders and you know the, the blade walking if you got one of those uh, abrasive bits. This thing just slice, 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 done. Now it's gonna be really fun is trying to fit this in my bucket to get it all cleaned off. So I'll be right back. Okay, I'm gonna do what I call some crazy math here. This is a one and a half inch tube. No, one and a quarter inch tube. If I were to cut, if I were to measure one and a quarter inches, draw a line, cut from this corner to here, that's gonna be a 45 degree angle. If I put two of those 45 degree angles together, you get a 90 degree bend. What I wanna do is bring it out here a little bit, not quite 45, something a little bit more uh, what's the word, Ob obtuse than that? Is that the right word? Non-acute, less acute, but I want it to be cute. Anyway, so if I measure half the distance and cut half the distance on both of them, that'll give me a 45. Let's take that one and a quarter, drop it back to an inch. So if I did a half inch, made a line right here. You know what, not, not even a half. Let's do even less than that. Let's do, where is that? Let's do one little notchy line in from that. Wow, that's really hard to see the silver pencil. Let me find something a little bit darker. Seven sixteenths, right there. Okay, I'm gonna draw a line right here at seven sixteenths. Try and make that angle of a cut right there. I'm sure that there's a better, easier way to do this. I just don't know what it is. So I'm gonna make that cut right there, come across the bottom here. Draw a line right here. All right, but I'm just gonna cut off all the marker area with the plasma. Well, that's not completely, absolutely ugly, but yeah, it is. I'm gonna go ahead and just get a grinder on that, see what I can do to flatten that up and smooth that out just a bit. All right, I got that smoothed out a bit. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the other side, find myself a little six inch piece or so to just toss on here onto this end. Hopefully that's good enough and it's not too wonky looking. Yeah, it probably is. Yeah, I'll probably have to dress that up a bit more. 
That'll be fine. I don't have much of a clue of how to use one of these, but I do know that these numbers here mean something. And if I were to rotate this, let me make sure I do it the right way, right here to a six, that's about the angle that I'm using. Call that a six pitch, or I don't even know what that means. Whatever that number six is, drop it in the comments. What's that number six? What are these, what are these, all these numbers? So we know this is a six pitch. Let's just go ahead and set this thing right here in the center. Scoot it real close. Double check the top. Double check here. We're just gonna call this good. Go for it. Flip this over, go for six. Put it right here in the middle of our line. And what's really cool now, we've already got the start and the stop right there, so just line them up. Bam, just like that. It looks like I might have to do a little bit of cleanup still, but it's a whole lot easier to clean up that little bit top and bottom than trying to deal with everything. Yeah, it looks like I'll have just a little bit of cleanup still. Should be good. And that way you already have the uh, the marking on our little triangle square thingy. So we can just go ahead and put this on the little short piece. Ooh, short pieces, that's gonna be fun. Okay, got this all cleaned up, still a little warm, but I am impressed with that kind of a cut. That has gotta be some of my best work uh, probably ever. I'm gonna go ahead and get this tacked on and we'll see how it looks after that. Little tacky, tacky, tacky. And that is crazy awesome just how well that cut. I am really loving that plasma cutter. It is definitely coming along. I do like the size of this thing. That thing is a lot beefier looking than I even thought it was gonna be. What I've done here is I've just markered this out really well. And then when I cut out on this far edge of the line over here, then that plate should sit on top of it so that I can just run a whole bead all the way down the top and put it to the edge of the bar and the edge of the sheet. Let's go ahead and cut out the small piece from, I don't think it's gonna fit there. Probably be up over here. Nope, I was able to get it out of this side here. So let's go ahead and grab the torch and go ahead and start cutting that out. Smack it up inside of here so we can be almost done with this project finally. Now, I just wanna say one more time, I absolutely love this plasma cutter. Well, even though I missed my line by just a little bit, I don't really care. I was trying to go back and forth for if I wanted it to be sitting here on the front like this and then have this spare lead. But yeah, kind of sit it like that. But I think now that I've seen it with a back plate like this and the fair lead set inside here, I think that's the way that I like it. So if that's the way I'm gonna do it, let me cut out the other piece. All right, got the plates cut out. Go ahead and tack these in. And I might, you know what? I'm just gonna fully weld in most of these, especially the, uh, the fair lead plate. I wanna make sure that, that that gets really well secured. So in case it, you know, takes any hits or has to pull real hard on something that that doesn't end up popping off. I'll, I'll at least, yeah, I'll at least do that one all the way around. Just tack this one in, in a few spots. Well, I'm not entirely sure what I was thinking last night. Uh, maybe I was tired, not sure. I decided to pick up the stick welder and give it a shot. Uh, for no reason whatsoever, I found some. So I started over here and had some horrible welds and didn't even chip it to see what it looked like. Kept on going around. And I think by the last one, uh, it's almost a not terrible weld. It was just for practice, just to try my hand at it. So that was the first mistake last night. Uh, the second other mistake was I forgot to cut the hole right here for where the fair lead's gonna mount and drill the holes before welding this thing in. So if you're ever gonna make one of these, make sure you drill out this plate with where the fair leads are gonna bolt in and cut a little hole in there first. Uh, cool thing is, I don't have to worry about using a grinder, got the plasma cutter. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut out this little square right here. I don't think I'll be able to get this thing in the drill press, so I'll have to use a regular drill to mount in or, or to uh, drill out the holes. So I'm just gonna take this, eyeball the center spot in it, go ahead and just mark where that's gonna go and just kind of draw a little spot in there, sure. Yeah, I'll go ahead and drill those out. And then I think initially I'm just gonna freehand. No, I'll probably go ahead and put a, a ruler or something uh, down for when I, I cut this out. Well, it may not be pretty, but it is a hole. It is cut and the holes are drilled. So the next thing you need to address is right here in front. I need a plate to attach these to something that I can put the shackle mounts on. Hmm. I'm gonna grab some cardboard, do some cardboard aided design to find out what size piece that is, and then cut it out of the diamond plate. Do I wanna use diamond plate? I may see what other kind of plate I have. I've got something thicker, heavier duty, uh, just for fun. Well, this just kind of figures. I've got both three inch and four inch, and when I cut out my little piece here for exactly how big it needs to be, it's three and a quarter. So three inch, too small, four inch, too big. 
So I'm gonna, what the heck, I'm gonna try my hand at taking that four inch piece, cutting it down to three, I think it's about three and a quarter, three and whatever that is. It's in between quarter and a half, almost three and a half. I wonder if I just did it three and a half, a little bit of overhang, ain't nobody gonna see it under there. I'll go ahead and try my hand at cutting this out and then that'll be just enough room to put those, I think they're two and a half inch long D-rings mounted here and here, right there. And hopefully those should be here tonight so I can get this whole thing wrapped up and done and get some paint on this thing because that's gonna look nice. I just figured it would look better to have it on some flat plate rather than the diamond plate. Uh, so got that cut out, go ahead and get this welded in. Alrighty, there we go. Some of my awesomely mediocre welding. Looks pretty good uh, for my work anyway. And now I think I'm on a holding pattern to get the uh, two D-ring mounts once Amazon shows up here in a little bit. Is there anything else that I'm missing? Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I gotta, let me go ahead and get those caps made, those one inch caps, and then I'll continue this once Amazon drops off the D-ring hooks or the, the holders, deering holders. Well, it's been a few days. I apparently forgot to uh, order these on Amazon and I went ahead and painted most of the bumper with the uh, Rust-Oleum Rust Reformer. Uh, I found that it gives a nice little, what do you call it, matte black and it's a pretty durable paint. So I'm gonna go ahead and just slap these about an inch or so from the edge and just kind of center them on the plate. Just, I'm just gonna eyeball it. These don't have to be exactly perfect. And if I line these up right, inch and a quarter just bring this edge right here just eyeball it and put tack it in right there and i'm going to go ahead and stick weld these instead of using the uh, flux core and hopefully this is at least kind of straight on here i'm not going to pay much attention to this yeah it looks pretty good right about there works a whole lot better when you connect the ground clamp give that another quick eyeball make sure that it's somewhat straight ish Yeah, it's a good thing that my welding skills don't have to be perfect for these things. Yeah, it's not too bad. I won't ever, just don't look at that side or the bottom. I won't ever admit to being a, a great welder. It's, it's glued on with metal. What more do you want? All right, on to the next side. Well, I guess this just goes to show that just because you want to go and play with a stick welder doesn't mean that you should. Maybe I should just stick to my flux core wire. I'll keep practicing with this. Let's go ahead and put it all together and slap it on the cart and see how it looks. And there we have it. It is finally done. It seems like it took me forever to get this all worked out, but I think that it looks quite nice. I'll give you a little shot of the front, around to the side, and it is much easier to go ahead and reach down inside, grab the clutch if you need it, be able to grab it, pull it out. I have no idea what I would actually use this thing for. I will figure out a reason to have it other than just to look cool.